tips from Hoss on how you can be successful growing tomatoes. BER or blossom end rot is probably the most troublesome problem most people have growing tomatoes. I mean, you baby that plant along, you invest a lot of time and sweat into it, and it comes time to harvest that tomato, and the end of it down there is rotted. It's not fit to eat. It's disheartening. So we're going to show you strategies how you can combat blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is, in essence, a calcium deficiency. Calcium is one of those nutrients that's responsible for building cell wall in the fruit. It's very important. But that's just not all. you got to get the calcium to the plant. Blossom end rot is caused by a deficiency of calcium, but therefore sometimes the calcium is available, we just can't move it through the plant. So it's a fairly complex situation. Your commercial farmers are very concerned about calcium in the plant, not only from the standpoint of blossom end rot, because that makes the fruit so that they can't sell it, but also when you have good calcium in that plant, in that fruit, it extends the shelf life of the fruit and makes that fruit last on the shelf a lot longer. And that's very important if you got produce sitting in the grocery store. So the million dollar question is, how do we fix that problem? How do we fix blossom end rot so that our fruits are good and they last a long time? Well, first of all, you gotta make sure you got good information. There's a lot of bad information on the internet out there. You can have pretty intense arguments with people when they say magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt cures blossom end rot, it absolutely has nothing to do with it. It is strictly a calcium deficiency. Okay, so how do we deliver calcium to that plant so that we don't have blossom end rot? Well, you need to make sure you're using a good fertility program that has calcium in it. Also, you need to understand that water moves calcium, so your, your irrigation system or your way of applying water to that plant is very important. And also, a good calcium source at a good time when that plant needs that calcium and get it to the fruit. Okay, here is some common calcium sources. First, we have eggshells. You'll hear a lot of people talk about eggshells, using them for your calcium source for your tomatoes. You know what? They do work. Uh, it takes a little while for them to break down, a little longer than I like, but they do work. But here's the problem with eggshells. It takes a lot of them to make a difference. See here, I got three there. And I crumble them up. That's very little calcium there. So if you're just dealing with one or two plants and you want to put eggshells in there, it's probably not a bad idea. You need to do it way in advance so that they break down in time and become available to the plant. And you need to make sure you use a lot of them. It's simply just not feasible if you're growing very many tomatoes. Next we have here is sheetrock waste. We're actually working on our New offices inside there, and I went in there and picked this up, and I've preached this for a long time. But if you don't want to buy calcium, you can simply find somebody that's doing some new construction and get sheetrock, because you know what that is? That's just gypsum, and you can use that. Now, whether you want to take a hammer and bust it up, or you just want to lay it. Boy, that's tough right there. Let me hit it again. Whether you want to bust it up, or just lay it on top and let the paper degrade, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's a great free calcium source. And that gypsum there is fairly readily available. Now the next one I have here is Tums. Everybody talks about Tums. Yeah, Tums work again. It's a good calcium source. But look here, I bought that at the dollar store, and that was about a dollar and 26 cent. And that's not very much calcium. So if you're growing one or two plants, and you got plenty of Tums laying around, well, it will work, just not very cost effective. Now, the next thing we have here is gypsum. Gypsum is what the agriculture community will use. This is a powder form of gypsum here. This is what they use on peanuts here in the deep south because peanuts love calcium. And this is a great readily available source. And then what we have here next is our pelletized gypsum. And that's it right here. It's the same thing as the powder form, but it's pelleted. The reason it's pelleted is because it's easier to apply. This right here is not very easy to apply, but you can apply this through a fertilizer spreader or do like we do, just take your hand and move it around. So there you have it. There's some great sources of calcium right there. Now here is two good sources of nitrogen, and this is a complete fertilizer here. 
with calcium for your blossom end rock. Calcium nitrate here is what we use in conjunction with a good balanced fertilizer to inject into our drip tape that goes directly to our tomatoes right there. Ours is soluble, so we can either side dress it as a granular, or we can put it in our injector and shoot it through the drip tape. This is really important to use as your nitrogen source for your tomatoes. Also, we have complete organic fertilizer, and this is a hem manure, which is a complete fertilizer. And to be a complete fertilizer, you have to have one of each of those three numbers right there. And also, this is a great thing. It's got 9% calcium in it. So that is good to mix in as a pre-plant into your soil. And it's also good to side dress with this. Now, this is not soluble, so you cannot put it into your ejector. But a wonderful product. Well, we've got to talk about water when we're talking about blossom end rock. So calcium is mobile. It moves freely within the soil and it's moved with water. So I don't care how much calcium you put on that plant. If that plant is stressed from moisture from water or you're not getting water to that plant when it needs it, you're not doing any good. So not stressing that plant, giving that plant apple water when it needs it is imperative to controlling blossom end rock. We like to do it with drip tape because we can put that moisture underneath the plant. We can inject such things in there such as calcium nitrate and we never stress the plant. Yes. Having good healthy soils is also very important. Whether you're adding compost or you're using cover crops for organic matter, you want as much carbon organic matter in those soils as much as possible to keep those soils alive. We really don't understand completely what the calcium relationship is to organic matter, but I can tell you from years of experience, when you have high organic matter in your soils, it makes that calcium more available to the plant and the transfer is so much better. Okay, so your strategy should be to have plenty of organic matter in your soils, cover crops or compost, have a good living soil. Also, to make sure your pH is in balance there between six and seven and to use a good water source, drip irrigation, or if you use overhead, make sure you got a water source close by and you do a good job of watering your plants. And also, you want to make sure you use a good fertilizer program. You want to incorporate a calcium type nitrogen within your fertilizer program. And when we get bloom set, as you see right there, we like to start applying our calcium. Now I take a handful, and I like to throw it on each side because if you just do one side, it's just going to take it up through one side. So I throw a good handful around each plant. I do this every two weeks. And remember, don't use those sprays, the calcium blossom in rot sprays. They don't work. Calcium only moves one way and that's up. You can't spray the leaf and expect it to go down. So stay away from those and stay with a good program. Our goal is to help you grow those big juicy tomatoes because I think that's one of the most enjoyable things in life. Hey, us helping you grow your own food.